Howdy champs, my name is Mohit and uh, people this is yet another of my flash projects where I've uh, done everything the action script way. If you have a look at the stage there's absolutely nothing on the stage except a text wheel again which is blank. Okay, the instance name of the text wheel is names. It's uh, been set to classic as well as dynamic. Right. And uh, apart from that people there's absolutely nothing on the stage the uh, font family for the font is uh, a Brima which I've actually embedded I've embedded the uppercase lowercase and the punctuation so just in case the font is not available with the user we'll still be able to see the font that's what uh, and why embedding is actually done right if we have a look inside the library we have the color picker event so before we can uh, start excuse me coding it's important that I pull up the color picker event um, color picker component uh, from the components panel and uh, drop it inside the library right this is the embedded font this appears once you embed the font right apart from that people you can actually ha have a look there's nothing at all uh, on the stage uh, this one single layer which contains the action script right let me open up the actions panel for you so everything that is uh, happening out here is happening purely through action script and an xml file uh, before i actually show you the xml file i would like to show you a publish preview by hitting Control enter on my keyboard okay so this uh, flash project is all about creating a color picker with your own custom colors Right. As you can see, the colors are quite limited. And um, as I roll over the colors, uh, not only do I get to see the hexadecimal codes, the hex codes, I also get to see the color names uh, <coughs> on the selected item rollover. And when I roll out, uh, the color name actually disappears okay so how did I make this possible how did I make sure that the uh, color picker component appears only through action script how did I make sure that the uh, the color spectrum is quite limited okay although um, you can go on adding uh, the colors and the color names through an external line XML file now this is the XML file people let me uh, bring it up for you <coughs> this is the the file that I've written in um, Adobe Dreamweaver okay so people the color hex codes as well as the color names is picking from the uh, XML file uh, for people who do not know how XML works how XML can be included uh, inside flash and action script 3 how action script 3 can uh, pull out pull uh, in data from the externally lying XML file you need to watch uh, or read something about uh, XML inclusion in flash and only then will this uh, tutorial make sense to you otherwise it will not because I will seriously not go into the details of how XML uh, helps you transport data right so but it's, it's important that the XML file should be placed uh, next to so should be sitting next to the flower file which should be sitting next to the uh, Swift file so all the three files should be able to see each other in whichever folder they are that's a prerequisite so you can see out here uh, i have a color list uh, tag inside which i have the colors tag i've not used the s out here instead i've used z simply because uh, s is a reserved word and i uh, wouldn't want to use it inside action script so that's uh, colors opening closing tag these are the hex values of the different colors and these are uh, their respective names so that's black white light gray dark gray bisque blank almond chocolate corn silk okay uh, people as you go on adding more and more colors the action script is going to adjust to uh, that and uh, we'll pull in more colors and more color names that's absolutely all right cool uh, let's understand the action script then okay so as i said uh, before you can code it out it's very important that you drop the color picker component uh, inside the library unless and until you do that uh, the script will not work it will pull up an error what is also Im important is that you write these uh, import directives properly 
So import uh, fl dot controls dot color picker and import fl dot events dot color picker event. Okay, and the rest of the import directors will actually uh, auto populate as you write the code, but these two will not. So you need to write them upfront, save the file, and then begin coding. Will be a good idea if you can write all the you know five import directives upfront, save the file, and write coding. Okay, so let's see how we can dynamically pull in the um, color picker component onto the stage. I've declared a variable CP. The type is color picker, making it equal to a new color picker. Basically, uh, declaring a new instance of, of the color picker um, component. And using the add child method, I'm actually pushing the color picker component onto the stage and moving it through the move method at coordinates x25, y25. I'm declaring two variables i and j, making both of them equal to zero. Now the next few lines uh, are something only people who actually have worked with XML will understand. But still, let me uh, quickly take you through them. I'm declaring a variable XML data, data typing it to XML, not giving it a value yet. I'm declaring yet another variable my loader of the type URL loader and making it equal to a new URL loader, basically declaring a new instance of the URL loader class, which is needed to pull in a binary uh, data like an XML file. And then I'm adding uh, event listener to the loader, my loader of the type complete and it fires a function on complete once it actually loads completely. And then I'm using the load method to load an externally lying XML colors dot XML file, which is sitting next to the flash file, the flash file that is right. Let's see what happens uh, when the function on complete works, which actually executes itself only when the loader is completely loaded. Okay. Uh, <coughs> I'm making XML data, which is uh, which was the variable that I declared here, equal to event dot target dot data. Event is the uh, complete event. The target is the XML colors dot XML file, and the data is whatever is inside it. And then I'm data typing it to an XML. Okay. Next, people, what I'm doing is I'm I'm picking up the total number of colors inside the XML file, and that is possible if I make it equal to XML data dot colors dot length so i'm using the uh, length property and uh, if you remember let me show you the uh, okay so basically it is able to make out how many colors uh, tags there are so in effect how many colors they are okay again uh, if you've uh, ever worked with an xml file you'll know what i'm trying to say so it's able to pull out the total number of colors then we declare two variables color array color names both are arrays and i make them equal to an empty array up front to start with which we're gonna uh, push more values in later i'm running a, a while loop I, i'm gonna i'm saying uh, while i is less than the total number of colors which is actually eight as long as i is less than total number of colors which is eight i want the colors array to be filled up with um, all the relevant color names now again uh, the color names should have a data type uint so uh, you know you know outside the brackets i'm actually data typing it to uint and inside i'm saying xml data dot colors at i i is zero initially then it becomes one then two then three okay xml data is the xml file the and colors is the node so the first node what's the color hex code the second node what's the colors you know what is the uh, color hex code so on and so forth so the while loop uh, <coughs> runs uh, through the uh, xml file and pulls out all the colors similarly it does the same and pulls out all the color names so the way to do it is xml data is the xml file the color nodes at zero at one at two the color nodes always start at zero people this is color node 0, this is color node 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, right? Never starts from 1. So we, we push in all the uh, color name, uh, sorry, the color hex codes out here, the color names out here, okay? So that is what is happening inside uh, this while loop. And then uh, through the colors property, I'm making the uh, CP, CP is the color uh, picker, uh, uh, equal to color array color array is the uh, hex code of all the colors that is why uh, the the color picker is, act is actually limited okay cool next people what I'm doing is I'm, um, I'm adding an event listener to the CP which is the color picker uh, component on the stage and uh, the event is the color picker event specifically of the type item underscore roll underscore over so when somebody rolls over the colors you know 
uh, the items uh, of the color picker uh, a function display name should be run and what this does is uh, we run another while loop but this time not using i but using j uh, up front i make j equal to zero i declare j out here in the beginning if you remember people out here j equal to zero okay so what i'm saying is uh, for j equal to zero while j is less than the total number of colors which is eight okay if the cp dot selected color color picker dot selected color is equal to is equal to color array dot j so basically it checks uh, what is the uh, selected color inside the uh, color picker okay and uh, depending on that it's throwing in the names field names field is this field people this field here the name of the color which is then equal to uh, color names array and the index j now j fluctuates between 0 and 7 okay so in effect the uh, text field names is able to show the color names on the item rollover and then we increment j by 1 j plus plus that is uh, responsible for the loop uh, going through properly right so this this bit is actually responsible for showing the color names on item rollover items are color items rollover <coughs> and uh, adding yet another event listener uh, again the event is the color picker event uh, but the item rollover is replaced by item rollout so when you uh, roll out of the uh, uh, different color colors in the uh, color palette of the color picker this uh, function hide name should be executed which then uh, removes anything any text inside the uh, names text field lying on the uh, uh, stage right so we have the item roll out and item rollover uh, working too so people uh, the gist is in a nutshell what i've done is i have picked up all the names uh, of the colors and all the hex codes of the colors and then push them inside the color picker component that I have added uh, from the library onto the stage only through action script. Okay, so on an item rollover, it displays the uh, hex codes, the colors, and the, the color names. Uh, in fact, let's show you a published preview and then we'll terminate the tutorial. So here goes control enter. So as you can see, uh, as I uh, change or uh, as I roll over the different colors which are limited to eight. I can of course uh, increase and decrease by making uh, alteration to the XML data, the XML uh, colors.xml file, which is lying uh, adjacent to this uh, flower file or the flash file. And when I roll out of these, uh, of the color palette, okay, you can see that uh, the name, the color name actually disappears. So that's it people, uh, the, uh, the flash file and all the assets, the XML file, etc., are available as a free download from my website, HTTP code and forward slash forward slash quality lessons.net forward slash downloads. Uh, you have a good day, people. I hope to see you very soon. Bye bye. Peace.